preparation for a cryobiopsy using flexible intubation, the following tools are prepared. The team at Thorax Clinic Heidelbach is using a rigid 30-degree scope to facilitate intubation. The ET tube has an inner diameter of 7.5 millimeters and a separate channel through which the 6 French gauge endobronchial blocker is inserted. A radial e-bus probe along with the guide sheath is used. A bronchoscope with a working channel 2.0 or 2.6 millimeter in diameter can be used. The flexible single-use 1.1 millimeter cryoprobe is used for this procedure. A dedicated container serves for sample thawing and storage after removal. Ice-cold saline is available to control any clinically significant bleeding. An anti-fogging agent for medical endoscopes can be used. Depending on the definitive setup, a bite block might be useful as per the bronchoscopist's preference. Professor Hart demonstrates his approach to nodule biopsy using the flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe on a patient with a solid lesion in the left lower lobe, which is suspected of malignancy. After induction of general anesthesia and sufficient pre-oxygenation, the patient is brought into a supine position. Following slight reclination of the head, the rigid 30-degree endoscope with the ET tube slid over its shaft is used for direct visualization of the glottis and entry into the trachea. The ET tube remains inside the lumen while the rigid 30-degree scope is removed again. The ET tube can then be fixed to prevent dislodgement and a dedicated adapter is mounted to allow ventilation and bronchoscopic access in parallel. In this case, a mines adapter is used. After securing the airway, the bronchoscope is inserted to inspect it. to occur in 6% of patients. In a large retrospective multi-center cohort, 3.5% of patients experienced clinically significant bleeding that required an ice-cold saline or epinephrine injection. The dense morphology of the tumor decreases the likelihood of excessive bleedings. For safety reasons, an endobronchial blocker can be used. The 6 French gauge endobronchial blocker is inserted into the separate working channel of the ET tube. Moistening it with fluid can facilitate its insertion. After initial inflation, the balloon at the distal end might not fully return to its original shape, and this can complicate insertion through the narrow channel lumen. In case an ET tube without this separate channel is used, the endobronchial blocker may be passed through the glottis separately outside the ET tube lumen. After placement of the endobronchial blocker in the segmental or further distant bronchus feeding the biopsy area, test inflation is performed. The balloon should have a contact surface suitable for isolating the area from the rest of the airway in case of bleeding. Water or air can be used to block the balloon as per manufacturer's advice and bronchoscopist's preference. After test inflation, the exact volume that was needed to inflate the balloon intrabronchially for appropriate contact to the airway wall is extracted with a syringe and kept inside it. This serves to prevent inflation with more volume than is actually needed. Mechanical pressure to the airway wall is limited. For demonstration purposes, air is used for balloon inflation. The injected and extracted volume of air diverges as the air is compressible. This does not occur when a fluid is inflated, as it is not compressible. For nodule localization, the guide sheath is inserted through the working channel and advanced to the region where the nodule is located. 
The radiopaque ring around the tip helps to visualize the distal end under fluoroscopy. Then the radial e-bus probe is inserted into the guide sheath. Following sonographic confirmation of placement of the radial e-bus probe in the lesion, a fluoroscopy image serves to illustrate this position in relation to the distal end of the guide sheath, as marked by the radiopaque ring. Then the radial e-bus probe is extracted again while keeping the guide sheath in place. This allows the bronchoscopist to use two fingers to hold the bronchioscope, preventing dislodgement of the sheath in this way. This method can be particularly helpful in lesions that are barely visible under fluoroscopy, such as ground glass opacity lesions, small nodules, or those lesions that are located in the beam path along with other dense structures. The flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe is inserted into the guide sheath. Fluoroscopy is used to bring it into the exact same confirmed position of the radial e-bus probe in the lesion. This means it is advanced just as far in relation to the fluoroscopy marker of the guide sheath as the radial e-bus probe was before. Significant guide sheath deflection can be prevented by using the flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe. Once the cryoprobe is in position, freezing is activated, in this case for 11 seconds. Professor Hart is holding the guide sheath in position with his right hand to make sure that it can be extracted along with the bronchoscope and maintain its position. The sample is harvested with a rapid movement of the bronchoscope which is then fluently pulled out of the airway. Once the assistant can be sure that the tip of the cryoprobe, along with the sample, has passed the tip of the endobronchial blocker, he inflates the balloon with the predefined volume of air or fluid. The bronchoscopist keeps activating the freezing until the sample has left the ET tube. Earlier interruption of the freezing could lead to premature thawing induced by the patient's body temperature, and thus risk of losing the sample in the airway. Depending on the clinical setting, technique, and disease state, lower freezing times for cryobiopsy have also been found to enable harvesting of samples adequate for diagnosis, while lowering the fundamental risk for bleeding. With the help of the removal tool, the sample is gently removed from the tip of the cryoprobe. Forced removal attempts using forceps or sharp instruments should be avoided to preserve high quality for following examinations such as histology, and molecular target testing. The conditions under which the sample is stored and transported should be defined as per institutional pathologist guidelines, taking into account the desired examinations. The bronchoscope is reinserted through the ET tube and advanced proximal to the balloon. Following slow deflation, blood can be evacuated using the suction of the bronchoscope in the event of mild bleeding. Wedging technique and injection of ice-cold saline are able to control moderate bleeding. Only severe bleeding that can cause hemodynamics instability would require interventions that exceed the possibilities of bronchoscopic control. <laughs>